Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. So for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Dion George. I run a social media marketing agency and I also have my own coaching business where I teach you guys on how to start your own social media agency, how to get your first client, scale it and then be able to live life on your own terms. And in this video, I want to be talking about the sales mistakes that I made during the sales call with potential clients that actually prevented me from landing the client. No, I don't waste no time. Okay, so like I said in the introduction, today we're going to be talking about the sales mistakes that I made on the sales calls that actually prevented me from landing or closing the client. And the number one mistake I made, especially when I was just starting out, was coming off as too salesy. Now, uh, for those of you that have been following the channel for a while will know that I'm quite an introverted person, uh, which basically means that I get more energy from working on my own than I do from you know a big crowd, etc. And um, when I started out, I wasn't really sure what to say during the sales call, so I downloaded um, a sales script online, and I also basically took um, the, the book, Jordan Belfort, The Way of the Wolf. I took like snips, snippets and like little bits and pieces from that book um, basically you know added that to the the sales script and uh, used that basically as uh, my script for when speaking to potential clients and then on the calls like looking back you could literally hear me read off the script like literally you could just hear me like reading out senses you know when when someone's reading and you can hear that like monotone uh, like sound and you can literally hear them like speaking word for word that is what I sounded like on the very first sales calls. And because this script was obviously very American and very uh, pushy, which I am not as a person, um, it just came off as too salesy. So I, I would say things because it was on the script that looking back are almost cringy to, to the point where I think like, how on earth could I have said that and expected that client to agree with it? You know, so uh, that was the first mistake I made, uh, which is basically a combination of two mistakes. First of all, I read off a script. I guess I do highly recommend having a sales script, but don't read off it, okay? Memorize it, like make it your Bible for the next like two weeks so that you know it by heart. And then yes, you can have a script in front of you, um, you know, provide that it's, it's an audio call or if it's a video call, just make sure that they can't see that you're reading off the script um, or that you have the script in front of you. And then like I said, don't read it word for word, but just regurgitate what it says. And like I said, make sure that that script becomes your own. So don't download the script online or don't use anyone else's sales script. And if you do, then make it your own, okay? So add your own words to it and make it so that it sounds like you as a person. And you'll notice that it won't come off as salesy, but come off as more realistic. And you'll notice that the clients, the potential clients will be more likely to buy from you. Because guys, remember, no one likes being sold to, but everyone likes to buy. Okay, and then the second mistake I made, uh, which literally was like shortly after like the being too salesy part, um, when I sort of got the hang of the sales calls, etc., and um, I got more confidence in myself. Um, you know, I actually managed to scale the business, and you know, I was getting in more clients. And then mistake number two came, which was being too business centric. And yes, you know, you should always be closed and you should always be ready to pitch your services and you should be confident in your service. But it got to the point where I was too business centric and I was more thinking about the retainer than I was uh, thinking about, you know, the value that I could provide to the client. Because at the end of the day, guys, we are providing a solution as a service, okay? So our entire goal is to solve a problem. And if there's no problem to be solved, or if we're just pitching our service, knowing fully well that it's not necessarily gonna solve their problem, then you'll notice that it's not a right fit, and you'll notice that the clients won't either appreciate your service or just won't take you on because they just think that you're in it to take their money rather than actually help them you know, come up with a solution for their problem, okay? So mistake number two was being too business centric and being more focused on how much I can get out of the client rather than how much value I can provide and how I can basically provide the solution to the problem that they had. Okay, and as soon as I realized this, I, cause basically what it was is I just immediately started pitching my service. You know, as soon as the call went, uh, like, the, like the call was on, 
I just started like talking about myself, like, okay, we are a social media agency, we can help business X, Y, and Z, uh, generate more leads, customers, and sales through, you know, paid traffic and sales funnels, etc. And I had no idea what the client was, uh, what they were doing, what situation they were in, etc. Um, and what I then basically changed was I started asking questions. So rather than basically bragging about my successes and my story, I started asking more questions about their business. And again, you know, I use the sales script. Uh, for those of you that are in the coaching program, you know, it's literally the same script. Obviously now it's more updated, but um, basically the questions that I have in my sales script, those were the questions that I asked. But I, it, it was very like monotone. Like literally I would ask the clients like, okay, so uh, what forms of marketing are you using? And then they'll basically give me um, information and then I'll go, okay, and how many employees have you got? Like, literally, I would not actually answer or, like, turn it into a conversation. I would just ask questions to gather information to know that I can actually provide, um, you know, my service as a solution, but I didn't actually uh, give them any information or any value on the call. And, yes, you know, there are a lot of people out there that say, no, the discovery call is not there to provide value. The discovery call should literally just be to gather information, gather intel, and then offer your solution uh, or your service as a solution. But I do think that um, you do, you're more likely to actually land the client if you provide value on the call, okay? So not necessarily how to do it, but what they should do, okay? So you're not actually, uh, so you're preventing them from going out and doing it themselves, but you are basically providing information on what you would do in that situation. So a quick example of this could be uh, where you ask the clients to share their screen and go into their business manager and you literally just dissect the campaigns that they are running now. You tell them why, I don't know, the cost per lead is too high, what they should do with the audiences, how many ads they should run, why or not they should be running dynamic creative ads or campaign budget optimization and so on and so forth, okay? So we explain why and uh, what they need to do but not how to do it because obviously that is your service. And then you'll notice because I was scared to do this, right? I, I didn't want to do this because I was literally scared that they would run off and try to do it themselves. But if they, if they really value the information that you gave and they value their business, they would much rather hire an expert to do it then do it themselves, okay? Because they also have that mindset of work on the business, not in the business. And if they can outsource their online marketing, they can then focus on much more important things like, you know, actually scaling their business. Okay, and then the, I'm not even sure what we're up to. I think it's a fourth mistake. The fourth mistake I made, again, this was uh, way earlier back when um, I wasn't really confident in the sales calls. By the way, guys, if you want to know more about how I built up that confidence, etc., cetera, um, I posted the video on this on Monday, I think it was. So, um, you know, if you haven't watched that yet, make sure you do. It's about um, getting more confidence in your sales and how to overcome objections and like the one strategy uh, that you need to use to actually land more clients. But anyway, um, back to this video, one of the, or another mistake that I made was not having a call to action. And this goes for everything, okay? This goes for even when you're doing like uh, sales on Instagram, sales on Facebook, sales on even on YouTube. Like if you do not ask for uh, the business, you will not get it, okay? You know, they, oh, it's, there's a saying, a closed mouth does not get fed. You need to ask for uh, the business, you need to have that call to action. They are not going to say to them, you know, they're not going to pay you without you asking, you know, do you want to work together? And obviously, you know, you, you don't need to say that. You don't like, I've seen so many cheesy ways of saying this, like, have I earned your business and stuff like that. Don't say stuff like that. Just, you know, make it your own, make it seem natural and basically, you know, direct the client to that call to action. And a very, very simple way of doing this, and one of the ways that I did it when I just started out, was literally just saying, okay, this sounds good, I'm happy to work together. Uh, no, I said, if you're happy to work together, then I'm more than happy to work together as well. Shall we move forward with this? Okay, it's a simple question. Shall we move forward with this? And I noticed that like, that sort of got me over that fear of asking for the call to action because it seemed natural. It didn't seem salesy. I literally just asked, you know, shall we move forward? with this and obviously you know there are a bunch of variations of that and there are a bunch of ways that I do it now you know differently but to start off that is a great little sentence to you know basically to to transition into the close okay and then there's two more rapid fire mistakes that I made um, the first one was basically showing my cards too early and what I mean by that is given the price 
um, like far too early in the process, okay? Now, it's like, um, I, someone said that on YouTube the other day and it really did hit home. It's like a doctor prescribing a medicine without even diagnosing the problem, okay? So it's like you going into the doctor and a doctor immediately giving you antibiotics uh, without even knowing, you know, what issue you've got or what uh, illness you have, uh, you know, without even listening to you, that is giving you antibiotics. And that's the same when we give a price, okay? You do not know because um, it's value-based pricing, right? So you don't even know um, if that is the right price for them. You don't know if they can afford it. You don't know what their budget is. You don't know what their problem is. You don't know how much time it's going to cost you, etc. You need to find out all these things before you can actually give a price. Now, yes, you know, everyone has um, around a similar price point. And yes, we always say uh, a thousand a month, at least for Facebook ads. But you need to know if that client can afford it. You need to know if that is a qualified client before you can even think about pitching them. And the mistake I made when starting out was I did not want to get on a call with someone that wasn't a right fit um which i highly recommend you guys don't do anyway is you no know, don't get on calls that with unqualified clients but uh what i used to do is i used to before the call i used to say to them listen uh, my service fee starts at 1500 a month you know if this is something that you can't afford then let's just skip the call entirely okay and i literally just basically put all my cards on the table and like 90 percent of the people didn't even show up to the call or just didn't reply to that message okay so do not show your cards early ask them questions provide a little bit of value and only then once you know that first of all they can afford it second of all they are right fit and you 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 are confident that you can provide your service as a solution to their problem only then do you give your uh, your retainer or your fee okay which brings me to the last uh, mistake like i said the last two are rapid fire is taking on unqualified clients okay and you know we all know the 80 20 rule where you'll notice that 80 percent of your work will basically provide 20 percent of the results and vice versa and the same goes for social media marketing you'll notice that the bigger the retainer the bigger the client the less hassle they are and the smaller the client the more micromanaging they are because they can't afford your retainer and that's what it is and you'll notice that let's say a client is making 5k a month uh, revenue and your service fee is two thousand a month and then you also ask or you know basically demand a thousand um ad budget then literally like that's that's more than half of the income has gone to you and if you can't provide that return on investment or that return on ad spend they'll be very very dissatisfied and almost angry with you and your service okay so that is the best way to get the worst reputation, a bad reputation on and offline. So only take on clients that can actually afford your service and that you're confident that you can get results for. And you'll notice that as soon as you get out of that scarcity mindset that, um, you know, that does not, there's no more clients, because that's, that's another mistake that a lot of people make is they think that if they do not take on this client, there will never ever be another client again. And you need to realize that there's always another client and that you're always just one client away um, of you know reaching your business goals reaching that next income goal reaching that next milestone in your agency but that client does need to be the right fit okay so do not take on unqualified clients and a great way to still offer a some kind of service is to offer consultant so what you can do if you notice that the client cannot uh, afford your retainer or cannot afford the ad spend is to say okay listen um you know i I don't think this is the right fit at this moment in time because you know we basically work with uh, XYZ clients and you know our, we basically we, de we demand or our retainer fee starts at X amount. Now I don't think um, we could get your return on investments if we charge that to you, but what we can do is offer you consultant. Our consultant is X amount per hour. Uh, before this, we do require you to commit to X amount of hours a week. Okay, so you can say, okay, I'm 100 an hour and um i don't know i i need at least one hour a week of your time for at least a month uh for this to actually work or for you to guys to get you know enough value out of it okay so they're not on a retainer um and you know they basically they don't have the extra ad budget etc but you're just going in for an hour you're dissecting their business you're providing value you're showing them a roadmap of what they can do and first of all you'll notice that if they do actually reach success they'll come to you with the retainer in you know in a few months time 
you'll build up a better reputation and they they will also know other businesses that might be big enough for you to actually take on as a client so it's a win-win-win situation for everyone and you still get paid you know a decent amount for basically doing nothing and just giving advice okay so i hope you've got something out of this i hope you will learn from these mistakes like i said these are mistakes that i made in the past and by learning from these mistakes uh, first of all i can obviously uh, prevent you from making the same mistakes but you know i've also been able to develop my sales skills and now i no longer make these mistakes and i am much better at sales because of it okay but like i said hope you enjoyed this video hope you got some out of it leave a comment down below what you'd like to see for my channel next subscribe to the channel for more and i'll see you guys in the next video